Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is reconstruction and reunification of the South after the Civil War. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about this very, very significant and important historical topic, uh, Dr. Revis Mitchell from Fisk University. And of course, Dr. Mitchell, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you, Dr. Haynes. It's a pleasure to be invited. And to tell you, Dr. Mitchell, how indeed uh, happy we are to have you here. Uh, this is the beginning of a new season for us, and uh, we've had you on just numerous of times, uh, a number of times, yes. and uh, each time, as we said before, you bring us such excellent information. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we often think about uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, video that we did with you on slavery and the That's Emancipation right. Proclamation and all of those things. And so what we'd like to do uh, today, Dr. Mitchell, is to uh, recognize that uh, this is really the beginning of the voting season right. uh, here, and so to uh, sort of bring a topic in that would uh, deal with uh, the suffrage and uh, the whole problems that uh, came out of the reconstruction of the South. But before we get into that, Dr. Mitchell, let's have you to give us some information about your background, your right. education, right. and uh, what, in a real sense, motivated you to do the things that you're doing. Well, thank you, Dr. Haney. Um, it's been wonderful over the last almost 30 years now. Uh, I've been on the faculty at Fisk for 20 years. I'm a native of Nashville, educated in the Catholic and public schools of Nashville, uh, attended undergraduate school at Fisk, and did a master's degree at Tennessee State and a doctoral degree at Middle Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. But I guess this morning, I'm, I'm going to rather surprise you. I was looking back over some notes. Mm -hmm. And 30 years ago this year, in 1972, mm -hmm. I was invited to Vanderbilt to hear a young professor who they had brought there <laughs> named James Haney. OK, that was a, that's <laughs> I, a long time. That's, I, that's, that's, I, that's I, I, was, I was brand new <clears throat> faculty mm -hmm. at MTSU. And okay. you reach a point in life where you're looking through mm -hmm. your notes and papers. OK. And mm -hmm. there was a young man there with a with a large afro and a dashiki okay. named James Haney. And okay, I was down was, at MTS, okay, MTS very good. beginning our teaching career. That's that exactly was about the it. Time. And of course, that's what we, when we met one another. That's right. That's, that's right. That's, that's been that's a right. long time. So, so it's, it's been, I think, mm -hmm. good uh, over the years, the things we've discussed and the, really the popularization of history. Mm -hmm. It's really made the teaching of where students come to college now with a great yearning and desire to know about our national mm -hmm. past. Mm -hmm. uh, since September 11th, one year, one year ago, or year 2001, Americans have tried to find their place in the world. So it's a, still a thrilling profession mm -hmm. discussing American history, and particularly African American mm -hmm. history. OK, I, I'll tell you, Dr. Mitchell, let's talk about uh, the period of Reconstruction, the period that followed right. immediately after the war. And I think you noticed that when we uh, introduced the topic today, we said uh, Reconstruction and reunification exactly. of the South after the Civil War and et cetera. Exactly. Let's talk about that and, and let's have you to start talking about it by talking about uh, what you consider to be the Reconstruction period in American history well, and sort of bring our audience into what well, we're doing. Well, the Reconstruction here. period is one of the most vital periods in the country's history. Uh, generally, when history is taught, high school and college level, we teach it from exploration to 1865. Mm -hmm. We pick up with the war and Reconstruction. I tell people the Reconstruction period did for me as an African American what the end of the American Revolution did not do. It provided me with the vote. It provided me, it freed me. So it's a, what we call a watershed event in United States history. What we sometimes don't realize is that it was a great political struggle. So a political struggle between a North and a South that had been engaged in war for several years. But it was also a political struggle between a president and the Congress. Uh, Reconstruction was not easy. Mm -hmm. Reconstruction was not intended to be easy. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln, who really did not believe the country could be divided by war, wanted to make the reconstruction process quick. Mm -hmm. He wanted the country back in place. He couldn't deal with a disunited union. But members of his own party, the Republican mm -hmm. Party, who had fought that war, mm -hmm. disagreed. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make reconstruction of the South by Southerners virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. They wanted to collect emotion from a war effort. They wanted to punish the South. Mm -hmm. So as much as Reconstruction may be painted as reunion, before there could be reunion, there had to be a bit of disunion. Mm -hmm. uh, as the young people said, we had to pay the crime, pay for the crimes. And in the eyes of Northern Republicans, radicals within Lincoln's party, mm -hmm. the crime had been ever leaving the Union. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a struggle. Reconstruction is a point of struggle. Um, Politics. Lincoln initially wanted 10% of the South, 10% of those who had voted in the election of 1850, mm -hmm. to swear allegiance. 
But then you've got to look at who voted in 1850. Mm -hmm. Women didn't vote. Certainly black people didn't vote. Mm -hmm. And those who didn't own land didn't vote. So only a small percentage of those actually voted. Of that, he only wanted 10% mm -hmm. to swear allegiance. And he would declare states reunited. Now, is this what they meant by Lincoln having uh, what might be considered a very, very mild and uh, very, very, mild, very, very sympathetic mild. policy toward yeah. the South? And really, it was, it was toward the South, but really it was his support of the Union. Mm -hmm. He wanted that Union back and functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what he'd argued the war was fought about. And many people missed the fact that the war wasn't fought as much about slavery as it was about maintaining the Union. Mm -hmm. Go on. Uh -huh. Ma maintaining that Union. Mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln hoped that the union would be back and functioning mm -hmm. within a year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's such a disunion in the country mm -hmm. that Lincoln's assassination is brought on by the question of this reuniting the union. Mm -hmm. the, the ultimate question uh, were those Southerners who were upset with Lincoln. He had the radicals. Mm -hmm. They're upset with Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Lincoln really is, is in, in a state where he, he can't carry out what he wishes. Mm -hmm. uh, when, the, when his bill goes to the Congress, his mm -hmm. Wade Davis bill that was brought about Reconstruction, mm -hmm. it doesn't go anyplace. Mm -hmm. The Congress stifles it. Then they bring forth a bill. And when that bill comes to Lincoln, the radical plan, he lets it lay on his desk and mm -hmm. his Congress mm -hmm. go out of session. Mm -hmm. He exercises his, his pocket veto. Mm -hmm. So the struggle that ensues after the Civil War is as much a battle between a president yeah. and Congress mm -hmm. as we've ever experienced uh, mm -hmm. presently in, in the world situation where we're looking at the events and play, planning war, or looking at war, mm -hmm. and there's a struggle between the president and the Congress, that's very reminiscent of that mm -hmm. era mm -hmm. after Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a detrimental era mm -hmm. for the entire nation. Mm -hmm. It's very detrimental for the South. Mm -hmm. It's very detrimental for African Americans, mm -hmm. because caught up in the struggle, we are exploited, we are exploited. So we have to look at an actual struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, the, it's decided that the Army of the North will occupy the South. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there will be a period of time before there will be voting in the South. They decide, those who control the Congress decide, that they want the Southern states to swear they had always been loyal. Mm -hmm. And to many of the Southern state leaders, this was upsetting because they hadn't been loyal. They had formed a confederacy. They had formed a separate union. Mm -hmm. So the struggle for Reconstruction continues. Caught up in that struggle, will be the emancipation and the vote of the black Good. man. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing more troubling to Southerners than to see those who were formerly enslaved suddenly marching to the polls and voting. And so, uh, and so Dr. Mitchell, as we uh, uh, near this uh, first commercial break that we have here today, uh, we find that it, in, in this whole struggle that will uh, erupt after the war, which is to say that this is almost a continuation That's right. of the uh, intensity of the uh, emotions between the North and the South. That's it might right. no longer be the battle as such, but it is emotional and, 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 and quite uh, involved. But now, one of the things that we'd like for you to talk about uh, after we come back uh, from this break is the uh, citizenship rights of Africans mm -hmm. during this time. Because I think we know that uh, in 1865, the 13th Amendment is passed that will give them uh, freedom. That's right. Uh, but now, the 14th Amendment, that's uh, the, this whole the idea of African-American citizenship, exactly. I think that that's, that's one of the most important elements that we uh, could uh, deal with at this particular point, I mean, in this part of the, uh, uh, the show this morning. Exactly. And we will always remember that freedom and equality are not synonymous. Good. Very good. And, and, and of course, uh, when we take, when, after we take this first uh, commercial break, we'll come back and we'll give you an, an opportunity to talk about uh, the Reconstruction Act of 1867 and how uh, Africans were eventually uh, brought into the whole political process because Very there good. were uh, quite a, a bit of opposition. Right. Uh, in the South and in, to a lesser degree in the northern states in reference to uh, African-American uh, participation in politics and citizenship and whatnot. And I want you to uh, sort of lay that out as exactly. you uh, so well do uh, in, in some of these other uh, uh, parts that we've, we've dealt with before. And of course, we'll be back with uh, our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. The topic is...